Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Garage Bill Yon and my 94 Safari build. In the previous episode we completed the front suspension lift and in this episode we need to start working on the rear suspension. Now this will take several episodes to complete because I need to get my head around a couple of things and I need to measure a couple of things and I'll also be painting a lot of things and replacing bushes. While I'm waiting for things to happen and maybe even for parts to arrive, I'm also picking up this work again, which is the lights that I uh, bought a couple of months ago and the light bar that I manufactured in one of my previous episodes. If you are new to my channel, I'll put a link up here for you to go have a look at what I did when I worked on the lights. As you can see, on the front of the car, I've got two fog lights mounted in the bumper. The other four will be mounted across here. So uh, before I can start any work on the lights, I want to actually just clean out this um, roof rack. I'll take off the tire, I'll take off the jerry can, and then um, I'll put in some extra bars that I got for this. And I'll just start building up this roof rack in the way that it's going to be going forward. But before we do that, um, we need to start measuring the level of this car. I've had this now sitting here for a couple of days. I've sat in it a couple of times. I've turned the steering to left and right. So I think the suspension is now fully settled and you'll see that it is slightly lower than it was, probably by about an inch or two centimeters. So this is going to be the right height. So sit back, relax, and let's start working. Figuring out how to re-index the rear has taken a considerable amount of my time. Um, I wanted to make sure that I understand the, the I guess, the science behind it. Um, Haynes was not very clear on this. I've watched one or two videos on YouTube, but has given me some indication, and obviously some of your feedback has also helped me along. But what I found is that the climber manual seems to be the best. So if we page to, uh, this is page 196, You'll see that they talk about the special VW tool. Now, I don't have this tool, and basically what this is, it's a, uh, it's got degrees on the outside, and it's got a bubble on the inside, and the idea is that you need to get the bubble to be level, and then that gives you a degrees and minutes off of uh, level. Now, as this is 40 years later, I've procured myself a digital level, which will do exactly the same job as this guy does, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to measure the level on the uh, outer dorsal. Once we have that measurement, um, I will start taking apart the uh, rear suspension because we also need to take a measurement on the torsion plate. And these two numbers together will tell me how much I need to re-index the rear suspension, if any. Um, but there's a special way of doing this. So it depends on whether the nose is higher than the back or the back is higher than the nose. Then there's a sum that you have to do and that tells you how many uh, degrees and minutes you need to adjust your torsion plate by. So um, let's start with measuring the outer dorsal. Okay, let's quickly pop the level onto the outer sole, which is this guy. And I'm seeing 0.1 degrees and she's higher at the front I don't think this is really enough for me to re-index the torsion bars and if you look at the bubble that's nicely centered as well so I think what I'm going to do I'm going to get into the car and then let's see whether that changes the ratio um, by much and if that if, if I then get a lot more uh, angle towards the rear then and then there's a reason for me to re-index but if it's a minimal change then I think we can probably get what we need using the eccentric adjusters on the torsion plates so let's have a look see all right so let's have a look see where we are now well 0 0.05 degrees lower in the front now than at the back so the front is dipping down i was expecting the back to dip down let's just give it a bit of a bounce 
That should be enough. Where are we now? Still. Okay, now it says 0 0.05 higher in the front. And if we look at the bubble, it's still perfectly level. I don't think I'm going to re-index these uh, torsion bars. I know that some of you guys have put the three inch lift onto the front and I think then re-indexing is needed. But looking at this, I don't think I need to index these torsion bars at all. So let me quickly just check if I now step out of the car where we end up. Oh, wow. Ha, perfectly level. All right. Um, I'm very surprised by the fact that the car is actually sitting level. I really expected it to be uh, high at the front and low at the back. I also measured the other dorsal, just checking whether maybe the body is twisted or torqued in some way. But both sides are showing that the car is pretty much level, uh, 0, 0,10 on the other side. This one was now in the end 0, 0,05. Um, and even looking at it now, it does actually just look right. So I'm not sure whether this will still settle in some way and that it will still actually drop in the back. Maybe it will. I strongly doubt that because I've now bounced and steered and pushed and did all things to this car. So this should be roughly where it's going to be riding. Um, but regardless, um, I can adjust the rear height with a camber bolt that's in the torsion plate. So even if I get a bit of a droop in the rear after a couple of kilometers, I can still raise the rear sufficiently with that eccentric bolt. So... Um, I guess that means it's time for us to put the car back in the air and start taking out the rear axle because even though we are not re-indexing, we are still rebuilding all the bushes in the rear axle to make sure that it's nice and tight. So um, yeah, let's get the car up in the air. I've now got the car on jack stands. The quick jacks wasn't working in this area. And the reason for that is because I need to get a spanner back here on a nut. Um, and as you can see, the jacking point is right next to it. So um, in this case, the quick jacks wasn't working. I could have done them this way underneath the car, um, but I don't like doing it that way. It doesn't feel stable to me. Um, so I've got them on the jack stands, um, which means it's now time for me to take off the wheel. Um, and the drum again, and then we can disengage the handbrake lever inside the drum, and then we'll go from there. We've got the wheels off now on both sides. So what I need to start doing now is disassembling the rear axle. First things we have to do is disconnect the handbrake wires and disconnect the brake lines. But I'm not going to be documenting this process. It was really well documented by the Restoration Apprentice. I'll link the video for you guys up there. So go have a look how he's done it. Um, and then come back to me afterwards. And then we will be rebuilding this rear axle. Um, don't worry, I'll be waiting for you. Welcome back, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I know it's been helpful for me. So I am now ready to do the final piece of the work on the axle and that is to just loosen the shock absorbers over here and over there. Once that's done I should be able to drop the axle onto the floor. the shocks are out you can see they are a bit worse for wear 
they are actually not too bad they are not they are not shot they are there's some there's some pressure in these guys so they're actually not too bad um it's better than i expected to be honest so the last thing i now have to do is just pull out that bolt i've got the nut loose on the back already so i'm going to pull out those the bolt on this side and the bolt on that side and then if i understood all the things correctly this actual should drop out of the, out of the car All right, so I was just trying to get this axle to drop and it wouldn't budge one centimeter. And I've got the bolts out from there. And obviously I've got it disconnected here where the shocks are sitting. I've got this guy loose. So in theory, everything was loose. But then I realized that Restoration Apprentice did not show a step, which was this guy here. So um, this bracket needs to be removed as well. In his video, it is removed, but he didn't show him removing it, which is why I sort of kind of skipped it because I was just following along. So uh, this has to become off. And I think once this is off, then we will be able to drop the axle. So that was quite the struggle, but I managed to get it out and I've got it on my workbench. I've put the drums back just to protect the bearings from dust. But um, this is what I'm going to rebuilding over the next couple of days. So um, I need to start stripping it down all the way. All of these bolts needs to come loose. Uh, this has to come off um, and I'll probably have to degrease it because uh, this needs to get some paint as well. You can also see my new hatch because I don't like the 944 hatch. So I got me a nice original 924 hatch. So that's lying ready to go. And um, in this box here, we've got all the parts we need to rebuild this whole rear axle. All right, guys, I think this is where I'm going to leave it. This has been quite the job getting this rear axle out. I spent about six or seven hours worth of time to get it from the car onto the bench. So um, in the next episode, I will be rebuilding that rear axle. So please subscribe to this channel so you'll get the notification of when my next video is out. Um, if you guys think that I'm wrong about the re-indexing of that rear axle, please let me know. Everything I've read tells me that if the, if the sill is level, I don't have to re-index. So if there's something I don't know, let me know. I checked a friend of mine's 94. It's not been lifted, but it's also level. So, um, and from what I can see on Renlist, they say if it's level, it's got better performance, got better traction. So I think it's the way I want to go. Um, there will be no issue with clearance of the tires. That's all fine. Tell me what you guys think. And then um, I'll see you guys in the next episode when we start the work on that rear axle. Goodbye.